my first memory of seeing magic and being <clears throat> wowed by it was I had a, uh, a, a cousin uh, who showed me, uh, I guess he used to show me magic tricks. I, I remember one in particular that he did where he, he had a, a little box and put a piece of rubber across the top of the box and, and put a rubber band around it. Mm -hmm. And he would put a quarter on top and push the quarter right through the, the rubber into the box. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I must have been 10 years old or something like that, or even, I, I don't remember, uh, let's say 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I still remember very vividly him showing me that. I try to put my own spin on the presentation, you know, because it's still a, an original thing and it feels like something creative and, and my own if, if I present it in my own way. So a lot of this patter that I have involving, say, the um, not theory, you know, this is my own presentation for that. No, nobody else that I know of does it that way. Mm -hmm. Here's another uh, another trick. This actually is the only one I've been doing very, since very recently, so I've, I haven't done this for many people before, but... Uh, I like the idea of tying in this, this trick again with some math mumbo jumbo. So, um, <laughs> my mumbo jumbo math to go along with this is the following. Uh, so, there's a branch of math called knot theory. Have any of you heard of knot theory before? Well, it's true that this I'm not making up that they're mathematicians that actually study knots for a living. You know, they think all day about knots. And uh, knot theory has made some rather surprising predictions, you know, very theoretical predictions. And you say, no. That can't be. And so, but, you know, so I went and tested it out for myself. And indeed, everything the knot theorists tell me, I've been able to demonstrate in real life uh, using just, you know, a red and a white piece of rope. And I'll show you. So one of the predictions knot theory makes is the following. So it predicts that if you take a, this white rope and you tie uh, an ordinary knot inside it like that, then that knot should actually have some uh, magical properties. It should be able to transform itself just by rubbing together like this, just by twisting the ropes together, okay, that knot should be, actually be able to jump from one rope to the other. And that, that is a prediction of modern knot theory, which you know, I didn't believe until I saw it myself. I still don't believe it. I guess maybe what I like about both areas, math and magic, is you do see how clever people are, you know, and how amazing human creativity is uh, just some of the ideas are so so beautiful so I mean you know there's of course there's the spectator side of magic where you watch and appreciate but it's it, one of the fun things about doing it is when you learn how things are done I mean on one hand it takes away the mystery so if you see someone else do it you're, yeah okay <laughs> I know how that's done it's not as impressive anymore but on the other hand some of these ideas are so clever mm -hmm. and uh, so creative that it's it's really fun Put the four coins in the middle, and I'm going to show you what I've trained these coins to do. And after that, I'm going to tell you how I do it. I don't usually do that, but it's a special day. So, all right, we got four coins, four cards. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to cover up these four coins with the four cards. Then I'm going to turn it around like this. And now the fun begins. I'm going to show you that under here we have one coin under each one, but now. On the count of three, one, two, three, that one jumps over to there. And on the count of three, one, two, three, that one jumps over to there. And on the count of three, one, two, three, this coin flies up in the air, does a double flip, comes down, and lands right under there. <laughs> in card magic or coin magic, there are certain basic moves that uh, you have to master it because they they come up in many different routines and you but it's a bit of a mix and match thing that you once you know these basic tools you can put them together in different ways i guess it's like learning to write you know you learn certain constructions you learn certain principles about how how to write well you learn you know but then put there's infinitely many ways to put it all together mm -hmm. and that's where that's where the creativity and originality come from there are a number of card tricks, for example, that are based on mathematical principles. Generally, not very sophisticated. You know, I mean, they're kind of uh, can you count kind of type math, or is it occasionally? A you know, there's some algebraic identity thing that explains why the trick works. So, um, for a PhD mathematician, it's not a very sophisticated thing, mm -hmm. but for the average person, it's actually pretty subtle and non-trivial. So, I would say there are a lot of magicians that do card tricks and they don't actually know why they work. Hmm. They just read 
the instructions, they do it, it works, and they, they never actually know why it works. And mm -hmm. so I think one advantage I have is that I understand, I think about these things in my mathematical background and logical analysis background helps me understand exactly why things work. Mm -hmm. And I, I did another trick that uh, I learned about from some video that I saw where, and again, the, the, the principle wasn't explained, the mathematical idea behind it wasn't actually explained, he just said it works, but then I, I sort of, you know, it was not hard to figure out why it worked. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the reason it works is related to one of the theorems I was discussing in my combinatorics class. Cool. So, so I actually did this uh, trick in class and then we just went over in class why it works and it ends up being based on a theorem of Euler about graphs. That is incredible. Which is, you know, in our textbook. And so that was really, those kind of things help out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, actually, uh, <laughs> I think that's probably as good a place as any wow. for me to stop. So yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you'll hear more about how I came to learn all this stuff when you read the article. So I appreciate yeah. it being a great audience. Really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.